Some of you are maybe dreamers. Who here has uh, never done a deal, but you're really interested in real estate? It's okay, raise your hands. Cool, so we call you a dreamer. Okay, so you, you know you, you've heard about it, you know it's really to see other people doing it, you wanna be a part of it. Uh, who has done a deal in the room? Raise your hands. Perfect. Uh, who has done it, keep your hands up, those of you that have done a deal. Who still has a boss, like a W-2 job? Okay, so you're our starters. So you have done a deal, but you still have a boss and that boss is not you. Okay, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that's where the stage you're at. But of those of you that still have that hand up, who wants to be your own boss? Okay. For those of you that are doing real estate full time and are your own boss, raise your hand. Okay, you're an estate builder. Okay, so you have now you haven't quite fired yet, so you haven't gotten to the point where you can just stop working, which is the ultimate goal. We'll get to those guys in a second. Um, but you are working for yourself and you've figured out that now you get to work for yourself. It's really cool, but you work like 34 hours a day and uh, you're trying to figure out how to get to the point of like you can just enjoy it. So those are our enders, okay? The enders are, are basically our wizards 
at the end of the at the end of the road, and they're basically uh, they're doing it for the love of the game. Okay, they don't they don't need any more money. They're they make enough that they cover all their bills. They have fired. Okay, they are financially independent. Uh, they don't need to work, but they like helping people and they like real estate. They love it actually. So um, the idea is is that it's a ladder. Okay, and, it, and everybody's pulling up everybody behind them. So the enders are pulling up the estate builders. They're helping them figure out how to how to tone it down a little bit and get more control of their time. And then everybody behind them is pulling them up behind each other. So as you get into the, uh, excuse me, as you become a member of the club and you're at a certain stage, the idea is that you're gonna help everybody behind you and you're gonna get help from the people that are in front of you. So it's a lot of personal development and community building and Help each other out. Okay, does that all make sense? Cool. Uh, that is our hashtag, official hashtag, and our at for all social media. So if you guys take some pictures tonight, share it, uh, and post on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Take a pic. It's all, it's all the same thing. So I appreciate it. Um, and we have Pete Fortunato coming out. Speaking of the, uh, the tiers of different real estate investors, Pete Fortunato is coming out in August. Uh, members, you get a hundred dollar discount. And you have until July 28th to buy discounted rooms uh, at the Marriott in Riverside, where we will be doing that event at. I highly recommend you stay in the hotel if you haven't been to an event like this in the past. It's like a whole, whole other event that's separate from the event. So if that makes sense. <laughs> um, tomorrow morning here. Sorry, that still says 11 a.m. I really need to fix that. Tell the slide guy. Um, that starts at noon. Tomorrow it's noon every single Thursday. We do an exchange meeting. Uh, if you don't know what an exchange meeting is, it's basically a whiteboard meeting where we just make deals uh, for two hours. Whether it's notes, real estate stuff, cars, trucks, silver coins, uh, notes, any type of real estate, land, mobile homes, whatever, and cash down there at the bottom. So if you have some cash you're trying to put to work, you can bring that too and we just talk and make deals the whole time. It's led by Andy Teasley. Uh, who's also doing the Fire Focus event next week. Which brings me to that slide. And I'm good. <laughs> it's like I've done this one before. <laughs> so next week, uh, in the same room, same same place, Wednesday, 6 o'clock, will be Andy Teasley and Goodwin doing the Creative Financing Fire Focus. Uh, they're basically going to teach you, if you are interested, on how to be the best exchanger in the room. So if you want to learn how to be better at exchangers for the Thursday meetings, come to their meeting next week. Uh, that's what they're going to focus on next week. And then these events are going to repeat the first, second, and third Wednesday. So the first, second, and third Wednesday, 6 o'clock, here in the clubhouse, there will always be a meeting. There's also exchangers every Thursday at noon. And there's the fourth Wednesday events, which is on a rotation. So every single Wednesday, except for the odd months where there's a fifth Wednesday, there's something going on here. And we'll probably do something. No. <laughs> I'm also in the process of starting a podcast. Uh, it's been a little bit more technically challenged than I would have liked. So we're going to be up and rolling. If you want to help me get some content up, you can go to that uh, link up there, calendly.com slash I can't even say it, slash fire chat. Uh, if you want to sign up for that, you can get on uh, my calendar to do, a, do an interview with me. It happens right there in the studio behind us. Uh, we have full lights and green screen. It's, it's good fun. So. Come on if you want. And that's all the events. I'm not gonna go through every single one. Take a picture. Or go to events.iereic.org or just go to the website, iereic.org, and click the events button. It'll take you right to that, okay? But uh, there's a lot. Let's put it that way. And for being a member, you get to come to pretty much all of those for free. The ones that you don't get to come to for free, you get a discount as being a member. The only ones that aren't free, so the weekly events, exchangers, uh, the fire focus events, the fourth Wednesday events, those are all included in your membership. The only thing that's not is some of these boot camps that we're doing, like Fire Fast that's going on right now, um, and then the fire classes like Pete's class that are happening that are, that are more than just you know, a couple hour events. Those ones are an extra fee, but you get a discount if you're a member. So it's 25 bucks a month. I think that's cheaper than LA Fitness right now. So uh, it was 25 bucks to come tonight. So if you pay the $25, you get to come to everything. I'm hoping that a lot of you in the room can do math. It seems like a good deal to me. Who's a member? Cool. Is it a good deal? Yeah. Yes. All right. Cool. And uh, 
We have some sponsors here, but I'm not going to go through every single one of them. I'll just click through this slide a little bit. If you want to visit our sponsors, it's sponsors.ierec.org. And if you're interested in becoming a sponsor, come talk to me. And with that, I'm going to bring up Evan and Jim, both of you together. Yeah. All right. Yeah. If you're not familiar with uh, Evan or Jim, they have been members for a long time. They do everything from flipping, uh, from flipping and wholesaling to some rentals and, and whatnot. So they're those enders we're talking about, um, and uh, they've they're the ones that are doing the Fire Fast program right now, which is a boot camp on getting a uh, deal under contract in six weeks that we've been running. And we're coming up on the end of that. It's going pretty well. Got a few uh, few offers accepted there. So let's give them a round of applause. They're going to share some with you. here and uh, we're looking, really looking forward to what's coming this new year. We know there's a lot of uh, different things but the you know best when's the best time to buy like a rental or a good property? Well 20 years ago. When's the second best? Right now. So you know it's uh, something to remember and uh, uh, it's something that uh, a lot of people are like well is now a good time? Well it depends upon what you're doing as long as you're watching your numbers and, and you understand why you're doing it you know your exit strategy. But uh, otherwise, I'm excited to be here. There's something really to be said too uh, for all of you to come out, coming on out. Um, it, it's easy to dream about this forever, even if you've got maybe one or two deals underneath you. Um, you know, uh, I, I had a friend of mine that came by before we started, and he was like, "Really? You you can still buy real estate?" I mean, uh, he was sort of shocked. So uh, it's nice. You guys got to pat yourself on the back. Getting out here and getting yourself in the game is the only way you're going to score a touchdown. So congratulations to y'all. And uh, yeah, so we're like I said, we're excited to be here. And I'm just, uh, I got to get the clicker so we can start. I'm going to start. And uh, you got it. Okay. I'm going to start and I'm going to, Jim's going to pipe in at certain times and he has some things to go over um, as we do that. Um, first of all, again, who here has done a deal before? Okay, all right. Who's never done a deal? Okay, where are my real estate agents at? Okay, a couple, all right. Okay, all right, just wanted to get an idea. Um, no one I'm talking to. I see a lot of experienced investors in this room, and uh, I know guys, and I know some of you in here own a lot of real estate. And um, I'm, I'm uh, glad you came out. And uh, one of the things I read today was, uh, Something about don't be around people who don't want you to win. And Gary Vee had uh, posted that today. And it's something that could be important that I'm a big believer in. That's why I believe in networking. I believe going to events like this, uh, mixed lunch on Tuesdays, um, uh, that type of thing, exchangers, being around that because unfortunately some of us have family members that have a um, a member who has a little attitude problem, where everything's negative, they just can't see it, and no matter what you, you could win the lottery and say, yeah, we just won a million dollars, and they'd be, yeah, but you gotta give half to the government. You know, that's just how they see life. And so there's, you, you know, you know, you know those are, they're, there's, uh, they're emotional vampires. So understand that, and you recognize that, you can love them, but at a distance. So keep that, keep that, because your attitude is important to protect. So. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, we're going to go over how we evaluate properties. I'm going to talk from my experience. Some of you may do things differently. That's okay. This is the, the some of the thought processes that I go through. Uh, Jim may have some others. I may not have everything there that I think of, but it's what um, are the, the most of the things that I go through every time when we uh, get something on the contract. I'm already looking like, what are we doing with it? What's our exit strategy? Um, are we going to flip it? Are we going to keep it? Are we going to wholesale it? Are we going to pass? What are we going to do? So um, we're going to go through that. And then um, uh, we have a couple examples of uh, some properties we did. And we're going to go through that. So let's get started. Let's make sure I can operate this thing. There we go. So I just talked about that. Which one, the LTR, obviously long-term rental, for those of you who don't know, fix and flip, that's when you buy it, fix it, and you're gonna sell it to a, 
Uh, another person say in the next 30, 60, 90 days, that's kind of a goal. A wholesale deal is a deal where you get it on a contract and I sell my equitable interest in the contract. I'm not selling the house, I'm not an agent. So whenever you see, I'm wholesaling this three bedroom, two bath house over in Riverside, no, you're wholesaling your interest in the contract about the, and in the contract it references the three bedroom, two bath house. That's the difference. You can't list a house. We don't do that, okay? Because we're selling our equitable interest in that in that, that contract. That's how that's all legal. Everyone understand that? Okay. You have a question later. Uh, we are going to do a Q and A later. But if you do have a question, um, feel free to go ahead and answer. Uh, and raise your hand, and we'll we'll uh, deal with it so you don't have to forget about it now. Okay. For example, why did we why did we uh, uh, keep this particular as a long term rental? But I wholesale this one. <laughs> All right. Matter of fact, I just found the person who we bought that from, um, that we wholesaled, um, the actual seller moved to Apple Valley. We just found out he passed away two months ago. So I'm now working with the sister, trying to deal with um, through probate. Um, crazy deal. Um, anyway, but we kept this one as well as long-term rental. But then we wholesale this one. We'll go into this a little bit, but why we fixed and flipped this one? That was a favorite of ours. We actually wanted to keep that. But, um, and then we ended up keeping this one. So what, what are the decisions? Why do we want this and why do we want that and how we go through that? So um, this was a fix and flip. Um, this was another one we liked. And um, uh, but we ended up, like I said, having to get rid of it. And then this is one which is a long-term rental. So what, you think we, you know, throw a dart on a wall, like I'll keep that one, I won't roll the dice. Uh, or we ask the magic eight ball. And what do I do? Uh, right? Rochambeau. Rochambeau? Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, rock, paper, scissors. Uh -huh. All right, gonna have to try that. Um, so those are some of the things, but as you see, don't count on them. Well, each time we get a property in a contract, I go through a whole list of things, and there's a short list I'll go through later, but right now, um, due to technical difficulties, you're gonna get them all at once. These are some of the questions though. How many total projects do we have going on? So uh, we, we just closed on a property recently, and while we're in escrow, as soon as we have it signed, I, it's like, how many total projects do we have? Do we have a few, do I have four, do I have 10? Right now we're doing about a dozen different projects, but only a few are flips, okay? Only a few are fix and flips. So on one hand, you might hear that we're doing these three flips or two flips, then you hear 10 projects. Well, for example, um, we do Lonnie deals, which are rehabs on mobile homes. We have three of those going right now. Those are still three rehabs. Well, one just finished, but we're still selling it. Um, we have, I'm finishing a complete um, gut on a duplex up in the desert, some of you have been to, and we're, we're actually gonna be done Monday, and I already have taken applications for that. So that's been an eight month process that we've been doing nine months on that. Um, so that's just been a long process and we were treating it because our holding costs were low. So we were treating it as when you guys aren't busy here on these flips that have higher holding costs, then you can go back and work on this because it had a lower holding cost, okay? So, um, so that was, uh, that's one of the things that would happen. Where are we at on those projects? Because there are times where my cup is full. All right, it's like, all right, we have another project. You know what? It's like, no, 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 maybe we don't want to take that on. Uh, or maybe we have nothing going on, hardly anything going on. And our, we have crews that are, that are available. So these are some of the questions. And it says, available crews for rehab. Which crew? We match up the project and the crew. I have um, a condo in Corona that is coming up to be empty on Monday. And I have a, a one or two crews that I will let work on that. I have a couple crews, they will never go near that property because they're, they, they're great to slap some paint on, on a lower cost rental unit, but not a $2,600 condo. It's just, it just, it's a different look. It's gonna cost me um, almost double 
but that's just the way it is. So you also match not only time, material, location, crews. Oh, that crew, if they go and handle that job, they want to be put up in a motel the entire time. All their guys are that one month project, or at least during the week, and then they go home. So we know that these guys will drive and sleep on the floor over there. So it's a little bit of all that. Who's available? What's the budget on that? We'll go into that. Um, how much money do we have available? Someone asked uh, recently, asked Jim and I, uh, how much money do you put into that, pro into that project? And my first answer was, well, how much money do I have? If I only have so much, I gotta make that, that stretch, whether I'm doing some of the work when we started in the beginning, maybe I did some of the work in the beginning. Okay, right now, our uh, Richard's brother, our other son, is uh, over at his new house, that's why he's moving on the condo, and he's paying He's doing a lot of the work, they're cleaning everything because they didn't have the money to do, to go hire someone to do everything. So they're doing it on a budget. That's what you do, right? Every, anyone remember your first house? Those of you who own a home, right? I, I, I think I brought everyone in for a pizza party. All my friends, they moved us and we slept on the floor. The bed wasn't unloaded yet. Just kind of what you do. Of course, it's a lot easier when you're 21 instead of 55, but you get the idea. You know, that ground hurts a lot more. I, yeah. <laughs> so there's a little, I should have put how old am I, all right, for, for that too, right? I didn't, I, I should have that. But, uh, but also, when I say personally versus our corporations, so we have company, everyone's different. If you're just starting out, that's different than some of you that own multiple corporations. Uh, in our case, we own companies that we flip and wholesale in, and we own prop, uh, companies that we only hold the property in as in rentals. So if I have, um, a prop, a, my uh, LLC that is a rental company, that, that's what it does. Even if I have a lot of money, I'm not gonna go flip in that LLC, I just don't do it. But I will start looking for a rental because I have the money sitting there, okay? So understand that. So a lot of times, it's where, where are bank accounts at? So in other words, which corporation has money? All right, and this again, you ask on some of the evaluation, this is what we think of when you're doing more than a deal or two deals. We're fronting hundreds of thousands of dollars doing flips, rehabs, um, and it's, it's, we still look at money like a lot of people do on Friday. How am I gonna pay that bill? Well, there's some of that going, okay, we've got that 50,000 out, we've got to put 80,000 here, I'm refinancing that, I just sold that for $150,000 profit or whatever. Oh, we just did this, okay, and I have some money burning uh, a hole in that bank account, okay? Everyone following me so far? All right, so it's a little different if you're just starting out, you have a little uh, nest egg, all right? That may not apply because you're like, I have this money to use, but it does matter on another level is do you have a HELOC? Is that a long-term loan or short-term? Or a, uh, your brother says, hey, I've got this money, but I need it in one year, so you can only have it for a year. Now you have short-term money. So what can you do with it, okay? You can't go put it in something that's gonna take 10 years, or even two years, because it's due in a year. All right, everyone follow me on that? Okay, so the source of the money is important. So also, personally versus our corporations, what account, or which company has what money? Notice how I say it has what money? I have one company that has investor money and I pay a certain amount of interest. So I can't buy a long-term hold with that company and, and just get a little bit of return. I'll actually could lose money if I do that. So I have to turn money, turn, turn, turn the money, okay? So that really matters as well. So you have to understand what's the source, what's the money, what money do you have? Who owns more than five rental properties? In someone in the back. All right, so a few of you. So some of you know this. All right. Um, so, so that, again, the short version is: if I'm borrowing ten percent, and I'm, I don't want to go earn five percent with my ten percent money, get the idea, right? That's just don't want to do that. So that we have to deal with it. So I have a general partnership and a limited partnership. That both flip and they wholesale and they do notes, depending upon the, the yield on the notes. And so we do that. So anytime we're doing something. Um, I have to look at what company has money, um, how busy are they, do they all have money or, they all, or are they all kind of tapped out right now? These are some of the decisions that I get every time I get a deal. Hey, I got a call today 
but if from a buddy of mine says, hey, there's this deal coming up in Corona, you want to go in-house on it, and starts going on to yada, yada, yada about some of the stuff, and I'm already going, which company has the money, can I do that? That's a little higher price than we normally do, because that's one of the things that is there. Um, and you start going through the list. Uh, local and national economic issues. Yeah, uh, COVID was a wake-up call for me. That, I, I was in the middle of two deals. They stopped traveling to Europe. I immediately went to the uh, sellers and, and said, hey, I need a bigger discount. We don't know what's going on. One of them we lost. I didn't care about that. And the other one we lost, and I'm still kicking myself trying to because I really wanted that one. Um, two units for like $75,000, and I still wanted a discount, and it was rented. Anyway. Um, yeah, don't get me going to that. Yeah, yeah, that was gonna haunt me. But anyway, inflation, job market, and right now the USD is reserve currency. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Who's follow Who knows what I'm talking about? Yeah. Only a few of you right now, right? There's a lot of big moves are going on on the, on the world stage with BRICS, which is Brazil, Russia, India, China, and Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, is it? Yeah. South, Africa. South Africa. South Africa. Yeah. So. They're talking about doing that. That's just gonna that changes a couple things, and who knows? I'm not going to say what that's going to do, but it's an unknown. So on one level, that is a concern, and I keep I, I we make sure we're aware of it. That's all we're getting at, okay? Because if you know the writing's writing somewhere, that changes things a little bit. But that is something we do think about a lot of times. If a major election's coming up. On maybe on national stage or something, and you're right there. there. These are thoughts that are there, even if they're more fears than actual realities to our day to day lives. Um, local market issues, mountains and the winter. We used to live by this. We do a lot in Crestline, for example. And in Crestline, um, we kept trying to make sure we were buying in November and December and January at major discounts. We get them fixed up and ready and put them on the market in April and May, and we watch the price go up. Because by September, October, we were cutting the price. We were having to lower the price because you didn't want to hold it through the winter. That was the slow season. And we were doing that. But when the market nationally, you start having a, a housing crunch, a lot less houses on the market where 50% of the listings were gone. Well, guess what? It didn't matter as much. We see that as less of an effect now than we were seeing six years ago, okay? Because there's a lot less houses on the market. That goes into days on market going up or down. Where are we at in days on market right now locally? Anyone know? Yeah. 60 days. About 60 days. Where was it January? 30 days. No, Jan January. It was over 100. Mm -hmm. At over 100. All right, it had gone shot up. We're like, okay, it's slowing down. We're, we're making that move from a, from a uh, seller's market to a buyer's market, but it was still just a mature market at the time. What's going on? And so, um, and then out of nowhere, in a period of what, three weeks, four weeks, it just dropped. All right, um, and so the days on market uh, shortened. What that means is you put a house up and sell a lot quicker, which is good for us. Okay, so. Uh, these are some of the things. So again, seller's market, buyer's market. Um, and so this is this versus uh, Jim. Did you have any thoughts or anything you want to add to any of that? Well, I, I, have, oh, oh. I have others, but just thoughts on that. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, it, I, I, I like all the information. I just know that it, uh, it's difficult. You're, you're, you're looking at all of this stuff. It's, uh, there's a lot of information there. Um, when um, when I had you know the, you know 12 15 20 houses that we were doing uh, the, the company was set up to, to really flip houses there wasn't a lot of decisions that, that we were making as to how we were going to do this but I, I see the, the crew the people that you're actually going to be working with and the days on market uh, as, as very you know very big big uh, big parts of this um, I, I like to call it also like the maturity of the market. So for instance, um, Rancho Cucamonga is a very, uh, very mature market. Uh, the prices have rid, rode up really high and um, I, I don't know, can, can, can they just keep going up? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. Now, 
Now, because, uh, because there's not a lot of houses on the market, they, they, they seem to be selling rather quickly. But um, I, I don't see the, the, big, the big numbers, you know, where, where you'd, you'd buy this house and you'd, you'd think it was gonna sell for uh, $700,000 and you end up selling it for a million dollars, which, which, you know, we were, we were we kind of came, we're kind of have come out of that. Um, but I, uh, I, I think that I personally, especially if you're, if you've only done, uh, you know, one or two deals, you're trying to get another deal under your belt. Uh, I think that a, a lot of you uh, uh, that I that I speak to uh, have something in mind, and all we're asking for, you know, kind of the idea of us having this uh, event here tonight, is for you to just think a little differently. Uh, one of the one of the ladies. Let me win. Yeah. That. And I have a short list after all these to uh, leave you with. There you go. Okay. So because. We're getting into a little bit, but there's a, there'll be a short list. Yeah, and I, I, I think that's what I was trying to get at is, although every one of those are valid, every one of those are good points, I still think that if you live in Rancho Cucamonga and you're looking, or you're scouring Chino and you're scouring Ontario and uh, you're, you're scouring Pomona looking for a property, you probably have a pretty good idea of the maturity of the market or the days on market. You have, those kind of decisions are already kind of made for you. What, what I'm saying is that the, 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 con the idea of wholesaling a house Okay, especially if you have if you don't have a lot of of, of dollar bills, uh, you know, stored up. It, it to me, it's it's something that all, all of you really should be looking at. I know one of the ladies in our Firefast uh, uh, in our in our Firefast group. Uh, she she you know she she might find a way here to uh, put a couple of dollars in her pocket. She has two other contracts that she's trying to close. Uh, this, is, this to me is sort of the, the kind of thinking we're talking about right now, is once you start maybe juggling a couple of properties, determining which one is really gonna pay you, uh, even if it's a small amount, quickly, and move on to, to the more uh, long-term uh, investment. I think that's, that's part of her, uh, her, her idea, but anyway, you guys get what I'm saying. Yeah, I went on the next slide now, so um, I'll call you back up in a second. Yeah, because this is where some of you are might have a great job, or you're already sitting on a pile of cash, and this is where you're going to see where it comes down to. So it depends on what your goals are. So, but basically, the more instability or more unknown, the less project at once is desired for me. There's only there's a certain point where I'm like, my, like I said, my cup is, cup is full, and it can be influenced by a lot of things. I don't even have travel on there, but believe it or not, I've actually had deals in our hand. Um, they were they were okay, and literally drove out through the desert because I was headed to Colorado for two weeks, and I looked at it, said, yeah, this is pretty good, um, but it works best as a rental. Yeah, it's good. Now I'm going. I'm doing this. It's this. I, I know my my team slammed, and you know what? If it's here, I get back, and I, I walk from it. And then someone else buys it, and then I see them. They just bought it, um, emptied it out, put it on the market, made thirty five thousand, and went. I could have done that, you know, because but but I was full at the time. I was that busy, so kind of comes with that. But um, again, located in our flip area, L.A. City, automatic wholesale. You bring me something in Los Angeles, the City of Angels. I'm going to wholesale it. I'm not going to get in there and spend a year building and flipping. I'm not going to do it. There's a hundred reasons why. I have buyers who still like L.A. Or let me rephrase that. They still work in L.A. Maybe uh, it's just something because of the city rules are that strict. They're crazy in a lot of ways. I will not own a rental in, in uh, the city of LA. Again, they just, a lot of reasons, but it's just a bureaucracy. So we stay away. So we have areas that we work. We have areas that, that are our flipping area or our, our areas. And, and that's really anything from Barstow down to Temecula out into, um, uh, Hemet all the way up to uh, Big Bear, like Arrowhead and Crestline, although I'm not a huge fan of Big Bear, but still, um, that's anywhere in that, you know, really, not. and the IE, we're great. I don't run out to Blythe. A wholesale in Blythe, a wholesale in another state if it hits our desk, but we're not actively looking for that. But I'm not going to have a, a buy and hold in Kansas City. That's just not me. I've done it out of state, but no. 
So these are some of the things I'm evaluating why we keep one in one place and why in another we'll let it go. So um, if it's a sub two deal or sell or carry, well, they're going to be at the top of our list of why we want to keep it, provided the cash requirements are low. We're seeing a lot more sub two deals. A sub two deal is when you're buying, sub, buying a property subject to existing loan on it. So you come across a house, maybe it's $300,000 loan on it, might be worth 350, 320, 400, whatever. The point is you're buying it on agreed upon price and you're not gonna pay off the seller's loan. They're aware of it, you're aware of it. You're gonna just keep making the payment. Title does change, it does transfer, you will own it, but you're gonna be making the, uh, the payment to the bank directly or the, the servicer. Um, but we see those and they'll be like, we've seen some where I, they only need 300,000 cash and then you can take over their sub two deal for 3,000 a month, no, that's not a sub, it's a sub two, but no, I'm not gonna touch it. Yeah. I think, uh, I think we're gonna probably be seeing a lot more of those, not only because of uh, people, you know, thinking that they can net more money. I know my work at the trustee sales, uh, mo most of the people I see, they're, they're going after these uh, homes with modified first mortgages. So let's say there's the house is worth eight hundred thousand dollars, a four hundred thousand dollar first that's been modified to forty years at three percent interest. The payment is is tiny compared to what it normally would be. And you buy the uh, the, the investor comes in and buys the second mortgage for a hundred thousand dollars, and that would be the perfect uh, you know carry subject to deal and I think you're going to see a lot of those I, I, I see them really I see those houses being bid up and as, as more prop, more properties like that become available in the market there's going to be more showing up uh, for, for us retail buyers right yeah um, again that's why one of the things notice how I wrote that the seller carry and sub deal they go to the top of the list for keeping um, but only when low cash requirements are available. If they need 200,000, okay, I just closed on a deal. It's a Muscoy one that we sent out. And when I first structured that with um, the seller, I structured it to be a seller carry deal. But when it was all said and done, I was gonna have to front $200,000. I, I didn't come up with it, or I could have done with a loan, et cetera, but how it was set up, $200,000 from seller carry. And the way it was, it was like, I can just go to my money guy and get me the loan that I need and come in with like five grand, which is what I did. I ended up closing that deal for $7,000 out of pocket. So low cash requirements for me is something that interests me, especially if it's a, uh, a deal that I am gonna flip or anything. I'd rather put less, who'd rather put less cash out than more, right? That's just me. I look for those, okay? So, um, but, but if it's a sub two deal or sub where I'm getting like a 4% loan, I want to keep those, okay? I have a, a, a house right now, it's probate related. We're actually, we, we bought the irrevoc irrevocable assignment of beneficial interest. Uh, I, opened, I bought out the, the heirs. Thank you, Jeremy, for teaching that. He's in the back room. <laughs> uh, we bought them out and then uh, I've been making the first and second. I stopped the auction and we're making the payment because it's about a 5% Mortgage, it's been paid down for 10 years. I got 20 years left. Payment's about 1,000, 1,050, and we'll rent the house for about two. Okay, um, it's taking a little bit more cash than I'd like, but it still works, the numbers work. So also, uh, and you've got something we evaluate is, will the cash flow is a long-term rental? I'm not gonna look at a house, and this is great, oh, it's a good price, and you buy it, and you look at the, what it can rent for, and you're like, I'm gonna lose $1,000 a month. Nope, not gonna keep it. All right, that makes sense, right? So, will it cash flow as long-term rental? Yes, those of you who do short-term, who does short-term rentals? There's a few of you, I know. There's someone that has short-term rentals. Right, there's a couple of hands. You're like, okay, I'll, yeah, Marvin, I know you, yeah. Okay, yes, I know that in just about any house, if you look at numbers like a short-term rental, you can, you can cash flow. I'm not in the short-term rental market, so if it doesn't cash flow for long-term, I'm not interested. Unless, unless there are certain things, there's some long game that we're playing. Maybe, um, uh, maybe we get um, uh, principal only payments or something to where there's a reason why we will break even or, or um, 
even lose a, another hundred or two hundred dollars. We might do that. There might be a long game why we do that. But anyway, cash flow. If I can get twenty percent or up on the return, I'm, I'm willing to look at it. Actual cash and cash. So um, that's something there. So I really want low cash requirements. Price. If it's above five hundred thousand dollars, I'm going to wholesale it. That's usually just our standard. That's me. That's not Jim. That's me. Um, it's something I, we're buying 100, 200, 300 thousand dollar houses. And um, but if you come to me with we went to wholesale over a million dollar seven figure properties, sure. But uh, one second. But uh, as far as wholesaling. Um, I mean, we'll do that, but not flip. I don't want to put $200,000 down, then do a $200,000 renovation, and then go sell it, put it on the market for $1.6 million, have that a, a little adjustment, and then I walk away losing $100,000. It does happen. Um, and one of my mentors, even this gentleman here, when I took him to show a million dollar property once, because I was thinking he wanted, because that's his, he was working that, and he's like, Evan, why are you in this? Why are you looking at this? You seem to do really well at that 100, 200 entry level market. You seem to crush that. Why do you want to get in this? He goes, I've made a lot of money and I've lost my shirt on some of these. Why do you want to do that? And I was like, actually, I just thought I'd sell it to you. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I met that guy who was doing that deal at uh, Chipotle, for some of you know how obsessed I am. Yeah, I almost made a lot of money on that. Yes, keep it. So when you say the five hundred thousand above, you're gonna wholesale. Are you still talking single family homes, like if it's a fourplex, or does that make any difference? I, I I will look. There's a someone we know is working on a uh, fourplex now in Redlands that's going to be above that, and sure, I'll look at it. But a lot of times the money required to get it down is more than I want to front to wait. That's just me. Doesn't mean it, it might be a great buy and hold, but uh, I just use that as a rough number. It's above five, I'm probably gonna wholesale it. I just, because there's plenty of houses at $200,000. Uh, one came across my desk two days ago that I could rent and uh, get a decent return on. Uh, looks like that. Okay. Yeah, if you're yeah. trying to get doors, that's probably not a bad move. But if, if you don't, if you don't, if you're not a property manager, if you're not set up to do that, you know, you could you could probably easily find uh, someone who would, who would want that. There's, there's people in the room here that would want it. So it right. just sort of depends on your special specialty. Yeah. Who wants a four unit at a ten cap in Redlands? Yeah, a ten cap. Yeah. We're, we're, we're working on it. And then we'll sell it to someone at a seven cap or eight cap. But yeah, you know, um, but, but so there are, but under 200,000 long term rental, I'm more interested. And also, if it's a mobile home on land, um, a lot of times they'll cash flow really well. So these are some of the, the, the things, the cash requirements, lots of cash needed for down and rehab. I try to, especially on, the, uh, on, on um, a deal, it comes down to, and the price points we're at, we can buy for ten thousand dollars out of pocket with my lenders, or twenty thousand, or five thousand. Put thirty, forty thousand into them, sell them, and make fifty grand. Sometimes lately we haven't put in eighty and a hundred thousand dollars in the properties. We have had to do those too, um, and then make a seventy to a hundred thousand dollars. But ideally, these are the things. Again, in other words, we, we Jim and I get, and Jim will sure will talk about this more. Is it will someone will bring us something and say, but, hey, you can make twenty-five thousand dollars. Yeah, that's a nine hundred and fifty thousand dollar house. We need to come up with one hundred fifty thousand dollars for our lender, or a hundred thousand, and then we need two hundred thousand dollar flip to, to make those don't work. Yes, on paper, in theory, but a friend of mine recently came up to me and sold his one point four million dollar house, and. Um, might be in this room, and uh, it turned out that he was, you know, still owes one hundred fifty thousand dollars to his lenders. I don't work in that market. I'll wholesale that. Again, that's me. If you're in that market, great. I, I know that's L.A. and it's a lot of in, in uh, uh, Arizona, Orange County. It's just an area that I'm not familiar with. I'll wholesale them. You have one. You want to work, work the numbers? Be glad to. I just don't flip those. Or we'll keep them as long-term rentals. Anyone want to add on any of that right there? No, I, I, I am amazed someone selling a million dollar house and still owing $150,000. I think, I think that in itself is like what everybody should hear. Yeah. Like we should be screaming that 
It's, it's hard to make a $150,000 mistake when you're paying one fifty for the house, okay? Yes. And that's why we like those yeah. low price houses, okay? I think the, low, low, the, 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 the biggest loss I've ever had on flip was under fifteen grand, and you know the other ones are like three grand. They're just they're just square. It, it's real important that everyone sees though. It, 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 I mean, you know, it's not the only deal you ever do. Is this one hundred and fifty thousand dollar deal? And I think I think people have this all or nothing mentality. I'm, I'm saying that after you've flipped your, I mean, I'm making this up, your 20th house, after you flipped house number 20, being a little bit more liberal with your numbers or being uh, being able to uh, understand the risk that you're taking is is fantastic. But but all of you, there's there's three or four of you in the room that that don't absolutely have to have a win on your next deal. Okay, and that's that's really what we're talking about. We're talking about a way for you to sure fire, uh, not have to go to your spouse and say, "Sorry, I, oh, we just lost sixty-five thousand dollars." And I know that happens a lot. So, yeah. And by the way, if you've done, it, I've I've had deals, and I'm just going to bring it up where I, I had a fix and flip, and I had to segue into for certain reasons. I segued into selling it on a lease option to a family member, and when that went south a year later, and I decided to sell it because I was mentally done, and I just fixed it up, go back on the market, and I, and I lost. That's the one I lost uh, twelve grand on, whatever. Had I just kept it, renegotiated with my property, uh, my hard money lender, which is a buddy of mine, uh, I could have done it. And, and if I waited three years, I'd have made like fifty grand. And sometimes you're just done again, and, and that's just so. Andy Teasley will say, "All you do is hold on to it a little longer, and you wouldn't have that loss." Felt good never going to that address again, though, didn't it? Yeah, it's so. I drive by the house once in a while. We we did two deals, Richard and I, in that same neighborhood, and I drive by the house and meet. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and I and I know that I could have solved it. Key the car, slash yeah. the tires, exactly. <laughs> anyway, but but uh, so uh, okay. Um, Again, this goes into long-term cash available. Uh, what happens is it a multi-family? There's a question there. Single-family residents or an ADU. If I'll look harder, someone, one of you came to me the other day. We were at uh, Chipotle for dinner, and um, literally while we're sitting there, she's telling me about this deal that she just got on a contract driving from Dollars in San Bernardino, and uh, she drove for Dollars, saw this house, called her daughter, and said, "Oh." Uh, Skip traces for me. So by the time she got home, she called on it, got the deal actually. Uh, person answered. Um, got this deal, and there's a second home, like a guest house of some kind on it. And I'm like, what? Uh, tell me more. And she keeps going. I'm like, tell me more. Tell me more. Because I wanted to know. I, I asked like 10 different questions because I'm going to look extra hard as a long term as a long term rental, especially if it has extra square footage or hidden square footage. Yes, you can go down and, 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 you, and flip that, etc. But if it has that second unit or a third unit, or there's a way to, to make a tweak, I'm interested. So those are some of the things I look at to decide what I'm going to do with it, because it doesn't mean more rent. Um, also, now, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I, would say, I would say for me, that's the competitive advantage that, that I capitalize on the most. Uh, I was at a property with L a couple of, uh, you know, yesterday, and uh, we were thinking, uh, well, the, the paperwork said 300 square feet and 300 square feet for each unit, and it turns out that that's a 1,600 square feet is under roof. Okay, or it's like 15, excuse me. But the, 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 the point is, is that that is literally a gift with purchase. And when, when I'm trying to make a decision on which property I'm going to jump on and which one I'm going to maybe drag my feet on, when I find a disparity like that in, in, in reality and it's in my favor, that's a big indicator that I need to make sure, I need to free up the money. I need to make sure if I've got to bring a partner on, uh, I, that, that's what I'm looking at when I see something like that. Awesome, thank you. Uh, when I say which private money lender I use, I use uh, Financial Allies, as Pete Fortunato talks about. And again, anyone, any, uh, who knows who Pete Fortunato is? Okay, let me tell you. That's I, not enough I, hands. Huh? That's not enough hands. Yeah, it's not enough hands. He can change <laughs> your life. I literally flown our team out to Florida to listen to this gentleman. I know some guys in this room that are millionaires drive 
to Vegas to see um, Pete. He hasn't been out here in like five years, and he's uh, gonna be out in August, so I highly, highly recommend. I canceled a trip for my wife and I to Europe in August. We canceled it the second Pete got switched to August. That's how important it was to us. Um, I can't say that enough, and uh, no, I it will not, um, uh, my life will be greatly enriched by being there with him in August, I'm just sharing that. Um, but but I, I do have to go into which private money lender am I using, each of different needs. Um, does he have enough cash? Because these are private individuals, I'm like, hey Ben, do you have 300 grand? I called him on this deal that I was wholesaling that no one bought. Okay, I did, I got him a deal for $7,000. And uh, it's this deal, and I called him, and he had me the money in like five days. And we just closed on, on, on a deal. So um, sometimes, though, they don't have it. They're like, hey, I haven't untapped those. You know, Tim Clayton, he's tapped right now. He is, um, someone just borrowed a million dollars from him. So he just has a little bit of money right now. So I, that matters too. Do I need an institutional lender? Do I have to go to one of the Trillion or uh, Steve or some of the other things or the Norris Group or whatever? But a lot of this comes down, what are your goals? Monthly cash flow, massive checks. Did you keep enough houses this year? When I sat down with this uh, gal the other night, we were talking, I go, why aren't you keeping this house? You already have short-term rentals. You have a flip going on. You made 35 grand on this other wholesale deal. You just made money on something else. Your husband's employed in the medical industry, making good money. Why the heck are you not keeping this house, especially for what you have in it? It's like, ah, uh, well. And then I go, what are your goals? And she goes, well, we want to have um, uh, 30 houses in five years. I said, that's 60 a year, and it's April, and you don't have you don't have a, 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 a rental yet to go for that 30. She's like, no. Again, so what are your goals? Okay, you, those are some of the things too. Are, are you primarily, as Jim said, if you're primarily a flipping company, a wholesale company, and that's what you're doing because that's where your space is at? Great, well then maybe when you do get that buy and hold that doesn't work for you now, then yeah, call me, wholesale it to me, wholesale it to someone else that wants it, because you need the cash, because that's what you're, you're there. You're there for one of my several of my companies were designed as flipping companies. I have to turn that money and keep that money going. I need a certain return. I have people to pay. I have people that want the return. I have a retired partner in Oregon. There's certain things that we do that, to keep that going. So that their purpose is, is to flip. And then my LLC purpose is to create the passive income with the money that we make. Understand? So again, that's how we'll look at some of the things. So yes, I, I, was, I wanted to add that in, in my opinion, um, because of the experience level of the room, because of the lack of experience in the room, okay? The, uh, the last one there, uh, what are your goals? This is the one area that all of you have control over, okay? Like, uh, you don't have control of Tim Clayton doesn't have any money. You know, uh, you know you, you, there's certain things you don't have control over, but uh, not, not enough time is, um, is, taught, is, is, is spent figuring out and what I would call like bringing certainty to it. So that, that was one of the things that I had uh, when, I, when I'm out buying is I know exactly what I want to do with the property, or I think I usually do. And because of that, there's certainty and it allows me to operate with this, like, sounds ridiculous saying surgical ac uh, ac accuracy, but I, I believe that. I believe I know exactly who's gonna buy the house, who's gonna buy my home. I know what level of, of, of rehab I have to do, I know how much I have to spend for the property, I know what type of financing, all of those things go into this calculation, but I know it because I have goals that are clearly defined and and uh, I, I worked out with my spouse. Uh, you know, she knows what I'm doing. She knows what, what's happening. And I, I think that I, I've, I've met with a couple of you uh, that, that have had things go go sour, and and in your, in your and it hurts. It, it really does. It hurts. You're, you don't know how to get through this. But the, setting goals properly, setting uh, a proper exit, a proper entrance. Uh, what does it look like when things go back? What are you going to do? Like all of this kind of stuff is going to help you make a decision on what you're what you're going to do. And, and frankly, uh, I, I I had a, I made my company very simple, where I didn't have a lot of 
of avenues to go in. I, I either I wanted to own it for cheap, and I wanted to sell it for as much as I could, and get out as quickly as I could. And uh, because of that, I didn't have a lot of options, but it was because I had clear goals, and I knew exactly what, what I needed to, uh, that got me in and out quickly. Thank you, Jim. So back to long term, here's some of the, first of all, any questions on any of those on the list first? We'll get back to them at the end, but okay. Um, back to long term rental, why I kept this and this one. The reason why I kept these two, because they were on the same lot, and it was only $59,000. This was just a couple years ago, like three years ago. And I literally needed 5,000 repairs to make it a rental. And I, my investor gave me the full 59,000, so I was into it for about five grand. I had to keep, one of the, the, the seller, the wholesaler, said the owners only ask if you keep the tenant who's been there 17 years at the time, paying $475 rent, if I will keep them on, and I promise to do that. And he's still there today. He's been there now about 20 years. Um, anyway, but uh, I knew we'd rent for 2,000 a month to two houses, and my payment was only gonna be like 400 bucks. So it was a no-brainer to me on that. But rent now would be over 3,200 a month. It's still only 1545 because I have a long-term tenant uh, in the other house. And uh, my PITI is $680. So that's a hell of a spread. And yeah, all I pay is water. But or could have came from a wholesaler, um, but they so I so when when it comes from a wholesaler, a lot of wholesalers are like you can't I don't you can't send my deal out. I want you to close on it. So they're not asking they don't want me to put a training. Oh, I'm going to call um, uh, Lynn and say hey Lynn, you want to buy this you know and and do a training on that daisy chain. No. So on that, that's one of the influencing factors. Where is it coming from as well? So I was like, no, no problem. If I fix and flip the time, this is in the desert. Um, I've, I could have put 20 grand into it. Uh, 10,000 holding costs sold for 125. It would have, I'd have netted maybe 30 grand. Or the way I have it, it's about 18 grand a year uh, when I know it pro forma. Well, that was in two years. I get my money. That was an easy one. Keep it. Okay. Plus, I only needed five grand, and uh, it was just a, just again easy decision. And um, that's on now. And the White Hole sell this one? Um, located in LA, out of our area, not dealing with it. I, we had a front a few dollars to help this Vietnam War vet handle this thing. There was a rocket engine on this property. There were solar panels. There was uh, almost 30 18 by 18 batteries open with battery acid that literally got on my shoe and melting through my shoe, etched the back of the trailer. We um, didn't want to touch this and actually own it. So uh, once he cleaned it off, we closed on it. And we actually had it on a contract um, for 360, uh, 310, and we had a buyer at like 360. We were gonna make 50. And then the buyer, once he even saw it, he was a good friend of mine, goes, Evan, I just can't, I will walk. So we, we went back, we negotiated, we made 20 grand. Um, or if we purchased it, we would have needed about $100,000 and it would have been a two-year property um, and hazmat situation. Um, ATF had to deal with this house at one point. Um, they actually backed off, which was interesting. Uh, never heard of that before. And then um, the actual, this house, you've heard me tell the story, the city came out on my buyer, the city came out and said, that is a, you want to put an ADU in the back, that is a nine foot wide driveway and it needs to be 10 feet, we need to move the house. <laughs> and the front of this, you can't see it, is a, is a block wall, the front. So he was gonna go, I can't even buy the neighbor's foot and a half or I have to move the entire house. He seller financed it to the guy that's developing the project. I so, so why don't you work in LA? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta move a house. Move a house. Nope, not doing it. So, so you didn't close escrow, or you, 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 ended, you ended up closing, or you sold your interest in No, I, I ended up brought, brought a buyer in, and we we actually, my buyer released $130,000 for this guy to close on his property. We spent two months helping him move, and then we closed, so all the crap was off the property, because we did not want the EPA in there. There's a problem. So when you don't invest any money in a project and you make $20,000, what's your percent return on capital? <laughs> really good. Yeah, um, and then Jim's gonna talk about his deal for a minute. Here, oh, right, right click. This is one of yours, and then on the right, okay? Oh. Alrighty, guys. 
So uh, you can see I'm really into graphics and such. Um, <laughs> Uh, so we, this is uh, this is a home. Uh, and, um, if any of you drive on Victoria Avenue, uh, Victoria over there on the south side of the 91 Freeway, it's a it's a place my wife and I would love to move to. We're out looking at property all the time. Um, uh, the house had a, a burn hole in it. Uh, uh, we 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 didn't really skip trace it. We went to the neighbor. We, the, my wife found the property. We were thinking of moving into the property. To, to be honest with you, that was sort of like our, our beginning on this on this deal. Um, I did a lot of research, uh, trying to figure out exactly what we were going to do. I had numbers from like one hundred and eighty thousand, one hundred eighty-five thousand dollars to make it the way it looks. You know, the way it was in, in, in how it originally started. Or if we were going to move into it, we wanted to spend like three hundred thousand dollars. It would be worth over a million dollars. It seemed like a really like not a bad deal. Um, it took me a long time to get the contract. Uh, the, the, unfortunately, the, the the parents had died, and the lady was very hard to deal with. Um, and so I I ended up closing. I actually purchased the property. Uh, I paid four hundred forty thousand dollars for it. Sixty-four fifty-seven. Uh, unfortunately, I had to pay her her cost, which I was happy to do. So I was all in four four seven five five or four four six five five seven. Um, I thought the house was if I just cleaned it up a little bit, or excuse me, if I just uh, did the uh, a regular rehab on the property, it would be worth around nine hundred thousand dollars. That regular rehab was going to cost one hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars. It's a fire burnout, so the insurance company would come in and totally clean the entire property out. Um, $185,000 is a lot of money to invest in a property I already have almost you know, $450,000 involved in. Uh, I don't know when was the last time any of you tried to hire an architect. Like, have, have any of you tried to hire an architect? Yeah, okay. It's just not, an, it's not a real easy thing to do. Uh, I have a couple of people that I that I could have brought over there. I'm I'm asking you this because this is one of the reasons why we kept pursuing this property because the lady kept on telling us that she was going to redo the property herself, and we knew she didn't have the bandwidth to hire an attorney and hire you know all these people, and we just kept at it, kept at it, kept at it. That's how we got the property. Um, it would have taken at least nine months for us to. Obtain building per, you know, get, get drawings, obtain building permits, do all of the work, um, and that I think that's a very optimistic uh, figure actually of, of nine months. But let's just for argument's sake assume that. Um, let's go. There you go. So uh, the cost to sell this this product uh, at nine hundred and thousand dollars would be a forty five percent. Forty-five thousand dollars in commission. Uh, there would have been an escrow of fifty-seven hundred dollars. Property taxes. You own it for a year. It's a nine hundred. It's a half million dollar house. Uh, the property taxes are high. Uh, I say in category costs. That's the uh, signings and you know notary fees and all that kind of stuff. A forty-three hundred. So it's cost sixty-seven fifty to sell the property. So I'm, I'm sorry. I want to. I want to go backwards a little bit. The, all of this calculation, now I did this calculation rel relatively quick, quickly to determine, hey, this is what I want to do. And you'll see at the, at the end of this, just like Evan showed you, this was a no-brainer of a decision. Okay, this was not a hard thing to figure out. So let's, let's keep going. So uh, the, the holding costs were $1,800 worth of insurance, uh, $1,450 in utilities, uh, $900 in maintenance, um, a management fee of five uh, five thousand dollars a month, which somebody's got to get paid to run the project. That that, that would be me, thank God. But, but still, um, someone's got to pay that. So it's forty nine thousand dollars in holding costs. Uh, you got a construction of one hundred eighty five thousand. Um, total cost is three hundred and one thousand dollars. Plus, it costs four hundred and forty-six thousand five hundred and fifty-seven dollars. I've been all into this thing for three quarters of a million dollars, 
And it, it's a sexy deal. It looks beautiful. And, and everyone that I drove that drove by this property was like, "Wow, that's going to be and nice." Be nine months of project. Yeah, and th that's that's if I was a superstar. And I'm telling you guys right now, I, I don't, I can't just sit here and go, "Oh, I could have done it in nine months." I mean, it's just sort of an unknown. Okay. Um, so so. I sell for nine, I'm into it for three quarters of a million, I make $151,793. Hey, that's a good deal. That really is a good deal. And, and I think there was a time in my life I might have considered doing that when I was full of, um, uh, of, of gumption and not, I had more gumption than I had brains, okay? <laughs> For sure, because because if you notice, guys, I didn't get a loan on that. I, I wrote a check for the, for all of that. So what would four forty? What would four four six five five seven cost you for nine months? Would it cost forty thousand? I'll bet you it would. Nine times five. Yeah. Nine, nine, nine times five thousand. So the there first thing without. And that's just a rough number. Yeah. So so I wouldn't be making one fifty one if I had a loan. I'd be making one hundred. So that, that even makes it an easier decision, okay? Versus what I chose to do. And what, what y'all... Don't, don't tell Andy. Yeah. <laughs> what, you, what, you, what, what, what you all have to understand, I, I have a little bit of a story myself, and that is that I was in a pretty serious accident about a year ago. I've been sort of out of it. You know, I haven't really done a whole bunch of deals with this. And I, I, I gotta be honest with you, I'll just say all to all your face, I wanted to win, man. I wanted to get in and get out and go, and go away. And I'll show you the great news we, we came from this. So uh, I have an agent that I do a lot of business with. She takes great care of me and makes it to where all I have to, well, she tells me where to sign. And I sign, I don't have to read it. Well, did I just say that? Yeah, I, I know. I know. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, I do read everything sooner or later, but I, you know, it, it's uh, you have I have someone you trust. trust. I have a you high have level someone. of trust with her. Uh, I had to pay thirty nine hundred dollar uh, escrow and title. Uh, there was taxes because I I sold this in sixteen days. Okay, the total cost is uh, I'm just under twenty thousand. Um, we sold for five twenty. I sold to a, a really nice man who, by the way, hasn't done anything to the property since I did this five months ago. So how's that nine month gonna go for him? Okay, $54,000, it was a little, a couple, few dollars higher than that, but but that's, for me, that's a great win. Uh, you know, I, I live, uh, I'm a, a pretty modest guy. I live on just a little bit more than that in a year. And uh, it, it felt it felt good to do that. So let's run through these numbers real quickly. Uh, four four six five five seven in cash, fifty four uh, fifty four thousand dollar profit. That's a twelve point nine percent return in sixteen days. So if you take twelve point nine percent divided by sixteen, I don't know what the number is. Someone will have to tell me that. And then you multiply it times three hundred and sixty days. Okay. You come up with 272% on your money. That's how Templeton Fund, by the way, pays you 16%. They, they do similar <laughs> math like that, okay? Um, versus a 22%, okay? And that's if I finished in nine months, which the, this, the dude who's got the place isn't gonna do that. For 270 days, is, is works out to be a 29.57 annually. So doing the same math, okay, you literally make 200% more on a, on, a, on a yearly basis wholesaling the property. So what I would like all of you to do is if, if, to your, if you're scratching your head going, geez, how did you get that number? Please come to me, please ask me. I can do it, I, I can do this in my sleep. I do it in my head when I'm walking the property trying to figure this out. And if any of you uh, are, uh, what I'm not saying is I'm not saying that you shouldn't be subscribing to uh, the, the third uh, Wednesday of every month where, where the guys are gonna teach you creative deal making and owning properties and things like that. I'm not saying that there's not a place for that. I'm saying on this there deal, is. yes, I'm saying hands down on this deal, this was the best way for me to go. Okay, and that's what I have to say. Thank you.
And uh, you can see, Jim. So 16 days, 54 grand, or nine months, 150. See why sometimes you'll just take the money and run? It's just easier, you're mentally. There's a lot of it that is like, you know what, we're getting ready to do this. There's a, we have a kid, I have a quinceanera in our family coming up in Idaho. I'm moving my daughter to Alabama from Idaho and I'm driving back. I'll be gone in like three weeks. So when you start dealing with things, it's like, oh, I'll just take the money and run. Sometimes that's the best answer. So why wholesale on this deal? We're gonna talk about it for, real quick. I was busy, uh, we all were. Uh, quick cash, um, crews were busy everywhere else. Um, and one thing I didn't put on here is I, I had a perfect buyer for this house. And uh, he was hounding me for deals. Evan, what you got? Evan, what you got? Evan, what you got? And I partnered with a young kid on this that we've done a bunch of deals together. So we picked up like 270 and we moved it to 290. And uh, our buddy Lewis, he added an ADU on that and he sold it. This was when it was crazy. So instead of selling for like 500, he sold for like 550 or 560. He actually made more than 100,000, but I didn't remember the exact number. He was also a broker and he's a GC. So he pays himself as a GC, he pays himself as the agent separately. His kids are on the crew to help rehab the house. So if he ever not sells a house, he goes, hey, I tell you what, I'm not gonna pay you. I'll pay you monthly off the rent for the next and get a piece of ownership. That's what he does with his two sons. Just give you an idea. Yeah, so, so they literally own a lot of property together. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that was why we did that. Anyone can see where I literally had about an hour and a half, two hours in that. And our half was like 10 grand. So who wants to work I mean, 10 grand for about two hours? Right? I, I brought the buyer. Okay? So sometimes you do. Or we could have bought it, fixed it. And with the amount of money, we would have made about 40000 with a traditional flip at the time. Had we done it over, say, three or four months, etc. So we did that. Um, this is one that showed early long term. Uh, uh, we kept long term. Why? Because the seller gave us financing at 4%, $599. It's amortized over 30 years for 70. And in seven years, they can call it due. We've had it two years. So we actually keep, this is, um, we were thinking of short-term renting, renting this house because there's a history of the house, but uh, the point is we decided that, uh, uh, I was informed that my that we decided that we wanted a house in the mountains as a second home. So, uh, happy wife, happy wife. Yes, so that's a few minutes from Richard's house, actually. Um, but we, that's why, why we keep it so that and so Jim made a comment about this earlier, financing can be as much as important as the house itself. It can actually be more important than the actual house. Because if you say, hey, the, the, if I told you the payment on that house was $2,000, but you can only run it for $1,000, you can only lose $1,000 a month, all of a sudden it's not very attractive. So the financing can make the deal. And um, uh, we still talk to them, uh, to the sellers. I talked to them a couple days ago and let them know that the house survives Snowmageddon really well and we enjoy getting up there. Um, this is the fix and flip. Why do we fix and flip? Um, well, on this one, uh, we did talk to the seller on a bunch of different things. We looked hard at keeping this as a short-term rental before we even knew anything about short-term rentals. We were looking at what they were getting in the area. But we ended up purchasing, and these numbers were approximate, uh, but we got it for 215. We only had to spend about 20 grand on this. This house was built in like the 80s, and it was beautiful inside. Um, this was a former LAPD officer had this house, and he had a secret room downstairs through a closet. He had a grow room in the very back of the thing. It was, it was medicinal. Um, and, yeah, yeah, so it was, it, was, it was pretty cool, actually. But uh, uh, we actually we went back and forth on it, and uh, we ended up um, uh, selling this thing, and we had to put a septic in. I think right at the bottom of the steps, I think it was where the septic was. We had to put a septic in, we painted some trim, did some termite, and um, we offered it. I said, hey, use Angela, she'll sell the house for you, and you'll sell it. He had tried it a couple times before, and he just like, no, I just went out. And I want to leave in 123 days. I want to be in the truck gone. And I want no issues. And he had a bunch of chihuahuas. And when he had tried to sell it before, some uh, agent had let his dogs out. And he was like, no, I don't want anyone in here more than necessary. And we held on. We went through like a three or four month escrow. How much more would you have netted using Angela? 
We, we, we uh, oh, he would have netted uh, about $65,000 more. And I told him, he, he met with me, he met with her, and I said, you'll make more. And there, well, one reason why I was, I was pushing him to use my wife, because we were very low on funds. I was like, who am I gonna use? Uh, don't have a lot of money, what am I gonna, and we really were tapped out on a lot of other things at the time. So I didn't want it. So the more I pushed to, hey, just sell, you know, I, we still win anyway, he came back and, and she met with him, he really liked her, and she called me, he goes, I think he's taking your deal, what'd you offer him? Well, I really didn't give him an offer, I said like, someone in the low twos. So I called him up and he's like, oh, I made my money in this house years ago, I'm, I'm happy. Okay, so that was on Davos, Davos, right? Davos, yeah, we really liked that house. Um, so, but had we bought it for long-term rentals, we made like 55, 60,000. It would have been, PITI would have been about 15, 50, and at the time, rents maybe 1,800 long-term. So, the, it, it's just not a good uh, rental. If you, if you had bought that, you, you really would have had to have hoped that the appreciation came up. Uh, the appreciation or maybe the short term and we just didn't have experience with that so we went as a short term rental just numbers weren't very good but as a flip hell yes okay so you see how some decisions can be made as you're doing every time we look at a house we're like we already know we're, what we're going to do with it nine times out of ten it's going to be this or this oh we're going to wholesale it if it doesn't wholesale we'll, we'll flip it ourselves Hell yes, that's a mathematical calculation. Yes, yes. There, there's something also, Bill Cook, anyone know Bill Cook? He says if you pull out your financial calculator, look at the, look for the um, uh, button that has a GE on it. Good enough. <laughs> if it's good enough, you're good. So um, anyway, that's why we did that on this. Um, so this is a, this is something Jim's gonna go over on, on a couple deals he did. Um, when you have a flip, when do you add square footage or when to build a new home? I've never, I've added square footage quietly and, um, uh, and, uh, but I've never built a new home. So Jim's going to talk about that real quick. Okay. And then, uh, here you go. I like that term real quietly. I'm not sure what that means, but I'm sure you'll explain it in private. All right. All right. Um, so, uh, I, I purchased, uh, a, they call it a carriage house in uh, the Wood Streets. And everybody loves the Wood Streets. Oh, it's, everybody loves it. So this was a, I think, I, did, did you, uh, all the pictures make it? Just no, these two? Just those two. Okay, so uh, it, it was literally a 400 square foot garage that this poor lady was living in. And I, I have four real estate agents owned it. We paid $161,000 for it. And it took about a year and change. This is in a historical district. The house turned out wonderfully. It was a beautiful home. Uh, if I had to do this all over again, see, this was when I was young and dumb. It was just a couple of years ago. I was older and, and dumber, okay? It was a beautiful house though. Yeah, it, it, this was like a real, it, it really turned out wonderful. But I, we made about 60,000 bucks on this deal and I probably, and we held it for so long, we paid so much in interest. This was not a cash out deal. This was like, I, I paid a loan payment. No, we paid a loan payment, then we paid it off, then we got a loan it against it again. I think this went back and forth like three times because uh, we were always buying and selling houses. But a lot of money is spent doing that activity. Um, at the end of the day, I got a, a nice attaboy from like my mother-in-law and my, my family and friends because it was real sexy looking, but it wasn't a, a financial gold mine like I was hoping for. So what led you to, to do that transformation versus... It was ego. It was really was. I mean, if I'm being honest with, with you all, I, I, I wanted to do this deal. Uh, I, I, I bought into the idea, and, and some of you uh, have already had this idea, where you're thinking to yourself, well, uh, $150,000, I, I, that's bull, you know, I would never, I, I never see houses like that, well, you don't look for them, okay? You don't, you're, you don't go to Apple Valley, that's what he does, okay? So that's how he gets the big return on capital, and, and for me, this was like my area, I did a lot of business here, I did maybe 10 houses within a half mile of this house okay this was the big the big remodel or one of the big remodels that we did uh, here 
Um, I didn't do the calculations. I just wanted to do, uh, I thought that's what you were supposed to do. I thought that you bought an underperforming property and you fixed it up and you added a bedroom and a bathroom and a, we spent $28,000 building a garage. Uh, I think there was $12,000 worth of concrete. How long did you own the house from the start? Uh, I, I owned this place about two years. I owned it about two years. And if anyone thinks that um, the uh, historical district of River, does anyone here belong to a historical district? If any of you think that they are smart, that they know what they're talking about, that they have any idea what an investor goes through, you are wrong because they do not. Okay, um, I can I can just tell you the kind of nonsense we went through is we were all ready to go with this, and the lights that we installed and we got a final, and then we took them off and put the lights that I wanted to put back on the house. That's but they, but they needed the international building code schematic on all of the lighting, and I had to literally, and they wanted it signed by the architect. So I mean, folks. So two years, you built the house, and uh, you made a little bit of ego. There was a lot of us that wanted to go yeah. a certain way. We wanted to go, yeah. and then you made about you made about sixty grand over two years on this one versus you had a wholesale deal in sixteen days. You made almost the same. Yeah, and I can tell you guys right now, I could have sold this house for probably two twenty five, and I, I, I'll just tell you right now, I didn't really realize I could do it. And, and I was so, I was so like, when I say gas to the pedal, folks, I, I was gassed. This, this was, I owned 25 houses when I was doing this deal. And all I did all day long was just run and run and run and run. I was, I had gnaw marks on my tail. I mean, I just was, I, I had it in my mouth the whole time, just chasing them, dri driving to Palm Springs. We'll During that. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. That's okay. So, um, so that's that property. Now, this one right here is a little sexier deal. So, I bought this house right here. See the one behind the uh, behind the window over there? You see that on the from the far far right hand corner? So, we bought that house. I bought this from New Western Acquisitions. Everybody loves them. Um, I bought it from New Western. We paid three hundred and twenty thousand dollars for the front house. I knew right away that the back property, there was a 19,000 square foot lot that wasn't recorded, but I knew that there had been a lot split started. It, as it turned out, I went and paid a fee, it was like $27, and I had an official lot on my hands. It was a, it was a boondoggle for sure. We, we completely redid the front house. I spent $60,000 redoing the front house. I literally lost $8,000 on the transaction. Um, but I knew- free lot. But I knew what I was gonna do in the back. Again, boy, this is a good, this is like therapy for me because it was okay. ego, because it was all ego. It was like, yeah, I gotta build this house. I gotta build this house. So I had this really sexy, uh, modern structure in mind from day one. I knew that's exactly what I wanted to build. And I had a very patient investor that I worked with who gave me every bit of the money to do both of these projects. I put none of my money in, any of the, in, in, the, in this deal at all. Uh, we built the, we built the entire house for about five hundred thousand dollars. It took me it took about two years to complete the project. We sold it for a million two hundred thousand dollars. COVID was very good to me. Um, so what did you net? Uh, eight hundred thousand uh, bucks. Yeah. It was a great deal. It was a great deal. But but I can just tell you guys right now, this is a project that took a, a gargantuan effort. And, um, and because I had a lot of, of uh, momentum, because I was really, I was, this was uh, me at the top of my game, you know, uh, doing this construction, there was a lot of, for instance, um, the lot didn't perk. Does everybody know what that means? Okay, a, a percolation means water, in order for a septic tank to work properly, this isn't Corona, this is in El Cerrito. On a hill. Okay, on the very top of the hill, you had views in the front and back, it was nice. But it had clay soil, so water would go nowhere. So how do you put a septic tank in property that doesn't I know, drain? I know, I know. 
You guys want to know? I'll tell you what, you, you put a state-of-the-art above-ground septic system in and the water evaporates up instead of instead of seeps into the ground. So you raise that yard like four feet or there you go. Or and, and by the way, it only costs 36 grand for that thing. And, and um, versus like yeah. seven. And, and a really a really great story is uh, about a month after the, the owners uh, moved into the house, the agent called me and said, <laughs> the buyer wants to know what the mound is in the back of the property. Oh, <laughs> the mound was? Exactly, and I was like, look at this beautiful mound. I was scared to death. I was like, holy shit, he has no idea what he bought. That's and, the answer, holy and you know what? <laughs> And you know what? He didn't have any idea. He was a business owner from Dallas, Texas, and I knew, so talking earlier about who you're going to sell to, I knew that I wasn't going to sell this home to a local because no one would pay. Well, I thought it was going to be 800 and we sold for one, two. Yeah, I, I didn't think anyone would pay 800 grand for a house in that neighborhood. No local would. So I figured I'm going to make this house look like a Hollywood Hills home and I'm going to get somebody and somebody came in uh, and they literally, the first time they saw the house, all the lights were off. They, they, there was a problem with the electrical and, the, and, the, and they still were high bidder, but anyway, I can talk about it forever. Thanks, so. Yeah, and, uh, and Jim at the time, you, you were doing like dozens of houses a year, so while he was working on this for a couple of years, he was doing other deals each time. So you're doing a lot of stuff, so you got a project going, so just keep that in mind. Um, okay. We're gonna finish up here uh, a couple things. Long-term rental, this was one of the other, why when we asked early in the beginning why we kept the long-term uh, versus fit, fix and flip, here's why, it was a sub two deal. Um, uh, I actually had told them, hey, use my wife. Um, when they first came to me, we had done another deal in Muskoi. They referred us, the family said, hey, my brother's in trouble, he was a vet. And I was like, hey, I could give you your $33,000 uh, or 35000 he owed, uh, this was during COVID. Um, we could get you out of that, save your credit, um, but why don't you try to sell it? I think you could sell it for this. They had devalued their house. The, the wife was about five foot three, and they literally had painted the, the, the beautiful home with like black paint in some rooms, and she rolled to where she could reach. <laughs> and it was throughout half the house, and they let their three-year-old and five-year-old kids paint their bedrooms. It was that. They, they, the carpet was so good. Anyway, um, so they, they, we were about to lend them the money to do a partnership deal and let, them, and let my wife uh, list it. And we actually, unusually, a couple of years ago, listed that and started seeing the prices drop because in the $500,000 range in Apple Valley during New Year's and uh, Christmas season, not New Year's, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, and we were watching the value drop. They finally got a $440,000 offer, which they went up, and that's about what you're offering. I said, yeah, so they canceled the listing. I gave them uh, $33,000, took over the payment. Um, at the time, we were only getting offers in the 450 range, and I was paying 410 for it because they, they owed $350,000 on their main loan. They were 35,000 in arrears. They needed about 35,000 to move out of state. So it became 410, just that's we worked backwards. But because they had like a 3% loan, I knew with the second home in the back, was an ADU in the back, and we rent that today for 3,600. So we cash flow really well. It's about a 30% return. Um, but if I went to flip it, I would have to flip the sub two deal. And if you're gonna flip a sub two deal, you really need to stay in the deal. Um, just in, in one word with that, I see a lot of the gurus out there talking about, oh yeah, if you get a sub two deal, sell it for Carrie, just sell it to another investor. Uh, those you know, Vina Jones and Bill Cook are very uh, experienced investors as well. And they're like, guys, stay in the deal if you're gonna do that. If I make a deal with Jim, then I'm gonna take care of his credit, that house, and I'm, and I'm saying I'm gonna do this. And I'm gonna, don't worry, I'm gonna take care of it. You can trust me and they like me. And I go sell it to Brianna. And then she screws up in six months. And they call me, well, no, I sold it to Brianna. Right? Think about what you just did. 
So you stand the deal. It's one thing if I say, okay, and I sell it to her and there's a little spread, and I'm still paying Jim, because if she doesn't pay me, I'm making the payment. So ethics goes a long way. You only are as good as your word, and I'm, I just had to bring that up. And Bill Cook talks about a story where someone went and got about 50 sub two deals and seller carries and stopped paying everybody. It is a horrific story. So sorry I digress. Okay, real quick, long-term rental. Why was this a long-term rental versus um, a fix and flip? Because of this, it was in an area that I was trying to buy in. I know the area is kind of up and coming in Lake Elsinore. I own some others out there. It was 121,000 purchase price, but the rehab for 30K, I thought I was gonna do it for about 20K, but it was a couple issues. So 45,000 cash. ARV max was gonna be 185. I got an interest only loan with everything, went without principal, so it's 1125, but I rented at 1800. So if you see my cash flow, and I'm not getting into the management, I manage my own properties and all that, but I, as a flip, there was just no way to make that a flip. And I wanted another rental out there because I have other rentals uh, in the neighborhood. And so uh, I like the return on it. And um, uh, even though it was 19%, it would have been that, but that gives you an idea. So sometimes I'll do a deal because I have money in my buy and hold business that I want to get using and I, I have the same tenant in there now for two years. Would you have uh, would you have done this deal just like this if you didn't know property in the area? I would still have done this deal. I like mobile homes. Not everyone does, but a few of us really like them, and I will do a mobile home on that. Nice. It's also a nice lot. And my sister used to live side note five houses down before her house burned down um, uh, in the area, so I was familiar with it. And uh, there's a lot of building going on in the area. But here's a short list of, of some of the main things we talked about earlier. Um, really, what are your goals? If, if you're trying to get out of your job, yeah, you can start flipping, but flipping and wholesaling, which we do, it's, it's a business, and if you stop, the income stops. That's why every dollar we make just about from, from fix and flip, wholesale deals, we buy rentals, we buy notes, we do money deals, we do things that pay us again and again so we can stop. So luckily, because of that, one of our mentors, uh, Mick Blackwell, who passed away, those of you know who knew him, um, and uh, really got us going to start buying more rentals again with the money instead of just keep flip, 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 enjoy. It was what happens when the music stops. And uh, when COVID happened, that was a wake up call, and luckily we were prepared. And it was just because I he won most of the arguments. That's that's really what it was. But if your goal is, in my case, when I started, I, I had a job that paid the bills barely. And one of my goals was to get out of my job. I need a certain amount of cash flow. I can flip a little, and that's what we did. But again, what are your goals? So when a property comes across your desk, your goals are going to influence your decision. If you're $1,800 a month away from uh, of passive income, away from getting out of your job, and you have a project that's going to get you, say, the entire $1,800, great. If you go wholesale it, yeah, you might make 40 grand. But now you're a little far, you're still, it's just as far from your goal. Now, so it just depends upon where you're at, who you're doing, and, and so that's why it varies. What works for Brianna may not work for Jim or Fair, and that's why it completely matters. That's why we start asking a thousand questions. Those of you know Bill Cook, you ask him a question, I'll just fire back tons of questions. Those of you who call me or Jim and ask, we all of a sudden we're just asking you questions because I, we, if you only tell us part of the story, then we, we can't give you a good, uh, the right answer. Because everyone's decision is different. Everyone's, I, I, if I know you're running on fumes, have no money, I'm going to give you a little different advice. Yeah, wholesale, put the 40 grand in your pocket, save your house, do that. But if you're already making 50 grand a month in rentals and you have this little problem, my answer is going to be a lot different. Okay? I understand that. So here's a lot of the short list, really. How busy are we? Where are our crews? What's the location? The price? terms, how much cash I have, and then my private money lenders have cash. Those are my main things. That's it. Those are the things that I'm deciding, just going through. Am I going to flip this? Am I going to wholesale this? So it comes down to, oh, I got a trip in August. I, we, um, I told you we have a, a trip that, we, that I canceled that was going to prevent us from peak. Well, in July into August, I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this motorcycle trip for three weeks, and I'm going to go ahead and do this in, uh, in July. And in the beginning of August now, it's like, I'm going to do that. Well, my answer on what I'm getting into a big deal that might take a lot of my time at that moment, I may have a, hey, Richard, let's, let's do this. We might not be able to handle it. It could be just different. 
So these are all the different decisions that we go into, and you'll have your own decisions. Do you have a full-time job? Are you are you working on your thesis and on your master's, right? And so, and then should you do that? Well, yeah, maybe you should just wholesale that deal and put twenty thousand in your pocket, or five thousand. I'd pay five hundred dollars on the wholesale deal. It's better than not having five hundred dollars. Okay. Um, so, any questions on those? Because I think we're about there. Yes. Uh, on subject two. Come up here, Jim. On subject two, like over the years, it's been no problem. Banks don't call yep. the notes. Do you think with these lower interest rates that the banks will be more aggressive in calling notes? No. We're getting that question a lot, and well, I can tell you, I'd love to say I love that I know the answer. One of the things is I I figured, and some of the people I know we've talked. You think someone at the bank at some level will go? We gotta, we gotta crack down on find out where, where we have low interest to get that higher and call them due. Problem is that so many of uh, them have farmed out it to the securities industry, and you have servicers handling it that they don't all know. They just they're like, no, it's being paid. So could they do it? Yes. Um, guess what? They may. I, oh, think, no. I think the banks are worried about their $14 trillion worth of commodities that they have shorted or, or I mean, I, I'm making sort of a, a joke about it, but uh, I mean, do you know anyone that's been called on it? Um, uh, I don't know if he left, but I know one of our buddies, I think one of his friends, he's done like 70 or 80 sub twos, and he said, I think he has one friend that had one called due. But other than that, I don't know if anyone's had one called due. Yeah. If they, you do get a call on it, who's liable to pay the bank? Is the well, investor or the owner? Well, <coughs> you're responsible to pay for it. Yes, it's in the other guy's name, but you own the house. He owns the debt. Yep. You're, you're responsible. You need to take care of that, which is sell the house, refinance the house. You have several options. Go to exchangers, raise some money in 10 minutes, you know, whatever. Bring a partner in. You have lots of options, but you want to take care of it, not to screw with that gentleman. If it's a performing thing. asset with, a, with with profit coming in every month, you can easily find an yeah, investor yeah. To, to to help you out of that situation. But but they may. That that particular house in Apple Valley, they owe three hundred and something thousand. Yeah, the market keeps you know gets soft and soft and soft. And I have to maybe I have to put some out of more money out of pocket when I refinance it. Okay, I've had to do that before. Um, and on the, another one that I'm doing with a probate, the first is sixty thousand, second's like thirty. I could pay either one of them off. I don't want to, but I could. Okay. So, but it's a good, great question. Great question. Any other questions? What's the other? Uh, I mean, just a quick question on. Yeah. Uh, so when you're doing the fix and flip, hard money private money, high interest, but you're only doing it for a short period of time and then you you know sell the home, pay the money back. What do you do with sub twos or long terms that you want to keep? Is that your own money or I don't think if you need to come up with like 30, 40 K to I, I have some experience with that where I purchased a home in uh, in Anaheim. Uh, I purchased it purchased it subject to uh, I rehab the house uh, I ended up putting a renter in the property for a while. The, the city was giving the city was giving us a hard time uh, because of some landscaping issue we had. They wouldn't let us sell the property. They put a lien against the property. I put a renter in it. I had a renter for like, like two, two, three years. We ended up selling it. It's it's not. It's the same exact thing that that, that if if you had a long term rental in it, if you had a flip in it, it, it was just an easy deal for me to do because it required almost. I think I was. To buy the property cost like $15,000. I had to give her, you know, to, to, to get her to leave the place. It was a really simple transaction. I think that's what, if if you couldn't find an investor to invest, you know, to, to give you all the money to do the flip, find a subject to deal uh, to, to flip and you can maybe pay them a little bit more. You can, you can buy a little deeper, if that makes sense to right. you. Right, if, if you have, first of all, if there's a subject to deal, Let's just go for a moment that if it's a bank, that's one thing. I have a seller carry by by the, the seller carrying the, the note. And I did bring up, and I have it written in, that we could walk the note to another property with their permission. And I did talk to them about it. But they have to be able to agree, they have an option. Maybe I have another house that has more equity, a nicer house, and they're willing to do it. 
So you can write it in there, it doesn't mean they'll agree, but I know other investors have walked it to another property, like, hey, hey you know, uh, note holder or the seller, I've got this great property over on Main Street up here, it's worth twice what this is, and I'd like to move here, I want to redo this and sell this, and can, would you, do you like the money coming in, et cetera, or maybe I'd pay them a little bit extra. We don't know, but that is an option that you can do. Um, Especially if it's $70,000, $80,000, $90,000, $100,000 that yeah. you owe them, you're going to really kind of make a tax consequence for them. Um, and right, if it's before, yeah, they might not want yeah. to pay it off. If I go a, a three years in on a seven-year deal, maybe they, uh, they're like, oh, we weren't prepared for that. Please don't. It's like, well, I really need to sell the house because of X, Y, Z, but can I move it to another property? It's an option. Did that answer your question? Yeah. You sure? Okay. Okay, in case there was something in there that I didn't catch. Nuance. Yeah, it, it, yes, if we did that, we would create another new note, et cetera. But the, the, the point is that it is an option. That's all again. getting at. Okay? It's just debt. Yeah. That's all it is. It's just debt. So if, if I owe you $100 and I'm paying you payments on every, every month, uh, I, and, and uh, it, it's just a debt that I can, I can easily sell the debt to him. Yeah. Okay, I mean, it, it doesn't matter. It's just a piece, it's a, a negotiable piece of paper. That's all we're talking about here. Yeah, so you just let, talk to the sellers. That's all. Okay. Uh, so are any other questions? Yes. Yeah, so are these private uh, lenders or are they institutional or hard? The, 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 the deal I did was actually with uh, a, a, a lender at the note, and I just, I just paid subject to it. Paid it and paid her a little bit of money every month. I think when, when Evan's talking primarily is private money, these are people that own the properties free and clear. Um, the subject to deals, the, those uh, were instituted, the, I've only done a few of those, were institutional. And another one I think was a private, this other one in the desert was a private note. But we used that, we bought it that way, got it, and kept making the payment while we fixed and flipped it so we didn't put a new. Uh, loan on it. We actually bought it and just left the loan on. Just the way the, the deal was structured. The, the real issue is, Evan, is you've learned how to ask. If, would, would you agree with that? that? We did that deal in exchanges, so that was a little different deal. So, but, but that's why we're a big proponent of exchangers. Yeah. Um, yes? How many of your lifts have you done any of these options to sell? I have done one lease option to sell to a family member, it blew up on my face. I'm not a big fan because like 86% of all of them come back uh, to the owner. So by nature to me, that is stacked against me, uh, for me too much. I do a lot of subject to with the Lonnie deals. And um, I've had one where I bought back and we get another one back, but the other 25 or 28 are, are still going. So. Uh, so no, I have not. If I decide to sell, it's because I don't want to own the property. And I, that, when I say I don't want to own the property, I don't want to go to the street anymore. It's like, that's just my opinion. Yeah. But I, I, there's other people that make a living yeah. doing it just that, that way. So there, that's not the, there's no right or wrong answer there. Um, exactly. When, 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 I've been, when, when I've been really upside down, I was going to lose a lot of money. I thought maybe I could get a higher net if I offered uh, an owner uh, Owner financing. Yeah. Most people, most people that you meet on the streets that, that aren't at a class like you guys are trying to learn about real estate, they don't have the bandwidth for what you're talking about, and it's it's it's, yeah. it's a, you have to really know the product to sell it. Um, anything else? Any other questions? Anything related to our short list? Does so everyone understand the list? Why, like for me, I make those decisions. I'm going to keep this. I'm not going to keep this. Or I'm going to write. It literally comes down to we. I didn't get into it. But we have literally bought houses. Like, well, we're busy. We're doing. Let's do this. Why? Because I don't want my contractor, that A-list contractor, to go away on another job for six months and we lose him. So we have done that. I said, well, we'll make some money on the deal. We've done it. And he's happy, we're happy, and then he comes home and every so often, he's the one doing that condo for me for twice what it would be for someone else, but I'm happy to do it. Uh, I had a contractor who was an expert at, uh, at foundation damage. So it doesn't matter, any property I could find with foundation damage, I had home field advantage. Because I had a guy who, he grew up doing those kind of deals with his father. And he, and he I, I'm gonna say he had has done maybe 40 homes uh, with, with foundation damage. 
So he knew exactly what to do. We had we had a long track record of just producing the, 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 the a good finished product at the end. So so okay. it, it, everyone has a niche. Is what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. So um, I know we're going to hang out uh, a little longer. Obviously, I, Rich is going to come up. That is really all I have. And Jim, you good? You know. Yeah, so I hope you uh, got a lot out of that and uh, understand some of our thought process. Why, why, like I said, why this and not do that. Um, but I'll give you this idea. I'm not buying any rentals this year unless it's a sub two deal. It's got a promise in my life. Sub two deal. I, I'm an addict. I have problems. Sub two deal or seller care. It's got to be an incredible deal. I'm just going to move it to one of you. It's something we're going to do. It's just we're, 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 we're not because we did a, a lot of buying the last few years. And um, uh, so that I didn't get all the reasons. But again, we, uh, you'll see, one day you'll get there and you'll see why. After a while, you're like, no, nah, I'm taking I'm just not. It's all flipping and wholesaling the rest of the year and doing our body yields. And then working with you fine folks. So, um, Rich, I guess that's it. What we got? And, one last one. Oh, so okay. much. Oh, um, Monty Yu. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Short answer. Lonnie Yield is named after a gentleman named Lonnie Scruggs who wrote a book called Deals on Wheels. By the way, if you try to find the book, it's like three hundred and fifty dollars. She has a copy. I think you, you can buy it on a PDF. But basically, it was a way to buy mobile homes either on land or in a park, especially in a park. Buy a, a home, pay cash, fix it up, and sell it on a note. And sell it in the beginning. It was like a seller financing deal, but with certain uh, federal loan changes that they become sub two deals with investors, etc. But it's a really great way to get high yield and create kind of like uh, it's just great cash flow with great yields. Andy Teasley teaches a class on it. I highly advise you to take the class. It is about five hundred dollars, but only take it if you want to make hundred grand. Otherwise, don't take it. And I'm serious. <laughs> Uh, it's a pretty easy decision for me, um, so uh, I learned a lot from that class. Uh, anything else? All righty. Well, then uh, here we go, Mr. All right. Let's give these a round of applause. <laughs> All right. Uh, just a quick reminder. Uh, so we'll be here next Wednesday for the creative financing with Amy Teasley and Goodwin Yee. And then the following Wednesday, the fourth Wednesday of this month, is our tribe building. So for all of you in the back of the room that wanted to chat all night, come to the fourth Wednesday. <laughs> and it's going to be our big open networking event. Okay, so it's called, called tribe building. All we do is talk all night for three hours. So if you are a new member or you've been around a while or you just like to network, that's your chance. Um, there's no speakers. There's no activities. We just eat and talk. Okay, so it's, the idea is, is that basically we'll build your tribe. So uh, we just network around, and for those of you new members, it's your chance to really meet everybody. So come out to that. That's going to be the fourth Wednesday, and it's all posted on the website. And if you want to get a hold of Evan, his number is up there, and his his uh, what do they call that thing on the bottom? An email. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and that is our website. If you want to join up for our buyers list, uh, that's our wholesaling website. And Jim, if people want to get a hold of you. My number's 951-880-8646, and it's jim at thekellerorg.com. Jim at thekellerorg.com. 951-880-8646. 951-880-8646. All right, cool. That's it for tonight. Feel free to hang out. I don't think anybody's going to kick us out, so, <laughs> except for me, when I want to go to the back. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're at least a half hour, hang out and talk. Uh, thanks for coming. Yeah, that's good.